Hey project managers, welcome to the step B of the diamond cycle. Now, first thing that you have to realize is that step A, step B, and step C are called steps because all of them are very interconnected. If you were smart, you would actually go through all of these steps and understand how the game needs to be played because of the interconnectivity. If you do not do step A right, step B will not be right and, you know, uh, consequently, step C is not going to be right as well. So which means the lesson learned is cover your basics, do it right. And if you don't do it right, the rest of the pieces don't move, right? Okay, everything, step B and step C, are all about outcomes, and the outcomes are with the customer. So which means you have to ensure that you get the customer on the phone call. The rest of it can actually be influenced by you. I'll show you how. But let's go to the steps, which means the first thing, completion of the step A cycle. You should be good at industry strategy, getting the companies, telling the team to relentlessly reach out to the customer. When you get the customer on the phone call, remember, it is your time to network. It is your time to prove your value. And how do you prove your value? Let me tell you how. It's called discovery and problem solving. Project managers are known for problem solving skills. But over here, in the civilian industry, people expect you to help them solve the problems. That is the next level of selling. It's called collaborative selling. And that is what project managers have to do because they have to engage multiple people. That's the reason it's called collaborative, which is, can we work together to solve a problem? Now, there's an absolute art in discovery and problem solving. To do that, you need two kinds of skills. Skill number one is to do the business cases right. Why? Because when you're doing a business case or a case study, you, you get the opportunity to slice and dice the customer. What is their business? What is their processes? What are the problems? How can we solve that? What is, uh, how big is the problem? Can we quantify it? These are the stuff that a project manager always has to ask. That means business cases are the most important piece to understand the business. Point number two is when you are talking to the customer, what do you talk about? So when you meet, the, meet with the customer, you take charge. You get your team on the phone call. You get the customer on the phone call too. And now ensure that there is perfect um, you know, communication with the customer. Explain your intent. So this is how you go. Explain the intent when the customer gets on a call. Introduce yourself and say, my name is this. I'm a veteran and I'm doing a training on business case studies. We did a case study about you. We really loved your business and we thought we could chat with you. So is it possible that you can give us a little bit of your, um, of your background and how you started the company and what the vision of this is? Let the customer talk. Why is that? Because you can only solve problems based on two things. One is understand what the customer is talking about specifically because now the customer is on the phone call. Second is the research about the company and identification of the problems. If you can do these right, then the conversation is all about brainstorming. So set the contract right on the first minute with the customer and say, let's the agenda. Are you okay with it? And let the customer talk about their pieces. As that is done, wait very patiently and then say, look, this is where we analyzed and we found these problems. Are you aware of this? Do you know um, what can be the bigger impact if you don't solve the problems? And we quantified this as a possibility of, say, um, $100,000, for example. So how do you think we can solve this problem? Is there a way we can, we can work with you and solve this problem? We like your company. We want it to succeed. Um, we've got absolutely talented people in my team who have uh, different disabilities, looking for opportunities, and are very smart. And over there, you have a problem too. And if we can work together um, and do a proof of concept, perhaps it'll be really a good opportunity to work together. This is how the conversations need to happen with the customer. And when you, when you lead 
lead with crystal clear next steps with the customer. Now, when you when I say lead, remember, this is where your project management experience needs to be sharpened. When I mean lead, you've got two sides. In the in a real world, you're probably going to have about five six uh, groups and teams to work with. So you've got to lead every step. How do you lead every step? By bringing clarity and bringing you know next steps and saying, okay, so this is what I heard about what you just told me. Uh, if I understood this right, this is what you're looking for. With the customer, clarify it. Now with the team, clarify it as well, saying that, look, the customer has this kind of a problem. Do you think they'll be able to execute it? Get that clarity. Some people in your team might be a little too, um, you know, uh, positive and say, yeah, yeah, we can get it done. But you have to be very clear that you can deliver it. So leading is very important. Last couple of pieces. Gathering requirements from the customer is how you need to, um, you need to end the call, right? You can either get it done in the 60 minute call with the customer. I suggest, and this is where I have been pretty successful in the simulation, which is you're bringing a customer for 60 minutes, keep it to 60 minutes. If the requirement gathering takes more time, and which it should, set up a different call. Now, how do you set up a different call? Do not say, when are you available? Then the person, the customer would think that you have nothing in this world but to dance in the customer's tune. Always say, is it possible to, we gathered the requirements if you think this is a worthwhile thing to do? Is it possible that we can gather the requirements on a separate call so I can give you 100% of my attention? Now, immediately take out your calendar and say the magic words. I've got two windows open for me. Would you be able to, you know, get your calendar up and find out when you are free? I've got this date, this time, this date, this time. This is how the magic happens. Customers like to choose. Give them the opportunity to choose. It's the science of psychology, which is customers don't want to be sold, don't want to be pushed. The moment you give them options, people like to choose. Either way, you win. Remember, it's a game of influence. And you can only influence when you understand psychology. Right? Okay, guys. So, once that is done, and you have you know, set the appointment with the customer for a later call, because now you're going to get the business. Step B is all about getting the business. To get the business, you have to sit down with the team and be very crystal clear of like, okay, what kind of stuff do we need to gather? What kind of a solution should we create? What should the business proposal be? And if the business proposal is this, what is a plan A, plan B, plan C? This is not selling. This is basically due diligence of preparing what happens if. It is the most critical piece of project management because different teams will do different things. Are you prepared for it? This is where you make things clear with both sides. Now, this is where when you get, a, get the customer on the phone call again, you lead with the solution and say, when you get the customer on the phone call, this is how you, you should structure this call. The customer gets on and you say, hey, this is, for example, Eddie. Uh, you know, we met last time. Let me quickly give you a recap for five minutes of what happened last time. Now, why do you need to do this? Guys, we don't, do you remember what you wore three, three days back or what you ate, you know, five days back? No. Everybody forgets. Refresh everybody's memory. And this is exactly what you need to do in real life. When you get on a project management call with different teams, your job is to say, guys, if you don't mind, can I speak for five minutes and just quickly explain what I've done, what we did in the last call? You need to do this on this call as well. It is due diligence. 
it is creating clarity and then say three things at least one so let me tell you what happened la last call point number two we identified that the problems are a b c third piece is that if can we do a proof of concept to see if we can solve this problem because it seems if you don't solve the problem it's going to you know um, it's worth hundred thousand dollars for example that is a cost to you so your goal at the end of the cycle is to get a hundred dollar business not two hundred dollars not three hundred just a simple amount of business which is hundred dollars which means this is the last step which is verbal acceptance from the customer saying you know what I like the proposal let's go for it perfect that is when the cycle ends which is step B now let's talk about step six again which is the solution call to close customer gets on the phone call you do those three things and now you start articulate, articulating what you learned at step five, which is when you get got with the team and did a plan A, plan B, plan C on the proposal, explain proposal A, then say proposal B and proposal C, and then say, look, these are the three possibilities. And it seems that if you do proposal A, this seems to be the best, B seems to be the second best, and we just kept, you know, proposal C just to let you, you know, by chance if A and B doesn't work we've got a C then you say did I do a good job you have to because you've already done a solid job just say do you think I've done a good due diligence from my part in identifying a solution for you because I know you're busy let the customer say yeah I think you did a great job and then you say okay on A B and C which one do you think uh, is more beneficial for your organization the person says okay I like proposal B oh really that's what I thought but if you don't mind which one is better um, uh, if you say proposal B is better can you tell me why it's better you always ask questions project managers ask questions and that is what happens if this doesn't work Oh, you like this? Okay, can you tell me why you like this? So you can be clear. The moment the uh, customer says, Oh, I like proposal B or C, ask, What is it that you liked? Why did you like it? Okay, does this solve your problem? Get the yeses from the customer, which means it is not about selling to the customer, it is asking the right questions. Get used to it. Okay, so enough of step B as I said if you can practice doing this step B continuously with the customer and customers three things will happen one you'll get the project very important for a project manager right with this skill you'll be able to get a chance in any cloud delivery or services company and say I'm not only a good project manager I can do the biz dev piece of incremental selling and understanding the customer because I have the skills to do it and that is how you get an edge compared to the rest of the people in the interview point number two is that now you get a chance to basically solving a problem this is the experience you need to talk about at the interviews that you're going to have later they're going to say okay can you tell us a good project that you worked and you give the example of this project and say well I, I got to tell you I worked on this project and I did it I got everything done from soups to nuts and this is how I did it this is how I problem solve it you have the story learn how to talk the story but you cannot do it until you experience it yourself the third piece of course is a networking piece remember you're networking you're showing your value to a c-level person you don't have to tell them, hey, would you, would you like to hire me? Never do that. Never ever do that. If you can show your value, you can always get the job. The problem is we do not have face time with people to show the value. Here you do. Which is the reason step A is very important. Get as many people on the phone call. Okay, guys. Let's go to step 
um, uh, C, but let us just quickly go through the activity for step B. Ready? Okay, let's roll. Remember, you need to have completed step A. Do the discovery call right. Ask your virtual admin for more stuff. But remember, just follow the directions that I have given you. When you lead, book the call right. Use that technique to always work. When you leave the call, ensure that you have gathered the exact requirements. To gather exact requirements, understand that you have got limited time. You can only, you know, get this done, say, take about 20 minutes to get it done, to gather the exact requirements, because you're going to need them on the second call or to build a proposal. Most people uh, get the customer to ramble for like 15 minutes and then they're scrambling. Don't do that. Let the customer ramble for 30 minutes, then you take control. Okay? Now, get to the get with the internal team and then develop a proposal. You have to have a plan A, plan B, plan C. Don't write too much. The proposal can be in your head, but remember, you need to articulate it. When you talk about a proposal, remember, to when you get the customer, on the phone call, which as we, as you understand, do not forget to ask for feedback saying, here are the three proposals, what do you think? Do not say that. Instead, rather you say, out of plan A, plan B, plan C, which one do you like? Does this solve the problem? Okay, we feel that the associated impact with this proposal is that it reduces at least some of these challenges. Do you agree? Where am I wrong? Did I do a good job? Make the customer give you the feedback. That way, the customer will think they are in control, but it is really you driving the influence and controlling it. This is exactly how a project manager needs to work. Get used to it. Okay, you get the verbal acceptance and you are done. You have completed the step B. Okay, guys, move to step C, please. Thank you.